In this lesson, I'm going to explain how to play a Stax record sounding uh, Memphis style blues rhythm guitar part. And um, that sound was uh, more or less invented by uh, Steve Cropper, who was the uh, rhythm guitar player for Booker T and the MGs. Now, Booker T and the MGs was the house band for Stax Records, so all those great artists that came through the Stax uh, Records label uh, had Booker T and the MGs as their backup band. So it was Otis Redding and Wilson Pickett and lots of great acts. And so Steve Cropper kind of invented a sound, and to my ear, it sounds like he was trying to emulate a horn part like a three-piece horn part, because in a lot of the song, a lot of that style, he's playing these little three-note uh, chords. He's not playing a full chord. He's playing these little uh, kind of a to create like a funky rhythm, a kind of a poppy sound, which you would hear uh, reminiscent of a you know horn parts just kind of jumping in at the at the right place in the song. So anyway, uh, I've put together a uh, my take on a Steve Cropper style rhythm and I'm going to play along now with the bass and the drums and uh, and then in the second part of this video I'll go into explanation as to how to play these parts. So here it is. repeats on and on and so that's it in essence um, and you can see it's it's not what you would typically play you know usually when you think of rhythm gu guitar you think of, you know strumming chords but this is a very different uh, way to approach rhythm so let's take a closer look at what's going on with that okay so let's break this thing down now uh, the first thing to point out is we're in the key of A so uh, our root is here on the fifth fret and this first chord is basically a three note chord that slides in and it looks like this. And so what I'm doing there is I'm barring with my pointer finger, I'm barring the first and second string on the fifth fret. Then I'm taking my middle finger and I'm pushing down on the sixth, sixth fret, third string, like that. And, and if you play all three of those, you'll notice that those are the top three notes in that A chord. So if you bar, if you make the A bar chord, where you're playing all six strings. These are just the top three notes out of that chord. No need to make the full bar chord. When you're playing this style of music, you rarely ever make the full bar chord because uh, you, you don't really have time to make it. In a lot of cases, you're, you're, you're moving too fast. So um, Steve Cropper would just let the bass player cover the low end, and he would just kind of grab the, the high end notes a lot, in a lot of cases. So what's going on then is I'm... Those are your three notes. So we're going to slide in. So we're going to go down a fret and we're going to go. You may want to practice that over and over again. The more important thing uh, to point out, though, is what's going on with the right hand. If you'll notice, I'm, I'm doing a down stroke. Then I'm grabbing a quick up stroke. And I'm putting my hand down, the, the palm of my hand down on the strings to silence them, to mute them. very quickly. And that's very important in this style of playing. You're going to see lots of muting with the right hand. And you're going to see muting with the left hand, which is where your your fingers stay in in position. But they're they're uh, not pushing down to to mute the strings. So there's it's this syncopation between the right hand and left hand that be a little awkward in the beginning, but once you get it down, it it feels very uh, natural. So this first bit looks like this, and practice doing that over and over again until it uh, starts to sound uh, normal. And then, uh, by the way, you can do this on an acoustic guitar as well. You, you don't have to play this on electric. Um, so if you've got an acoustic and you're trying to learn this, uh, this works just, just as well on acoustic. The second part is we're going to take our, our uh, ring finger, we're going to push down on the seventh fret, uh, we're going to grab, we're going to bar the top three strings. So it looks like that. So it's just that, uh, those, those three strings. Then we're going to go back, and instead of sliding back in, which you could do, I mean, that would work, um, 
what I uh, decided to do was to bar uh, on the fifth fret, bar the top three strings. So you, so you were already barring the, the top three strings on the seventh fret. So now you come down and you bar on the fifth fret and you hammer on your middle finger on the sixth string or sixth fret like this. So it's and I follow it up with a quick upstroke like that. So it And what I'm doing when I'm hitting that upstroke, I'm muting with the left hand. I don't let that note ring out. I don't go. You're, you're pushing down just long enough to hit it, and then you release the tension here, but you keep your fingers in place. And that's another thing you may want to practice over and over again, is just doing this. So you have uh, you know complete control as to how long that those notes are going to ring out. Okay, so we got the first part. Then we're going to come back, just down, up, down with the right hand. Then we repeat it. Then we come up and we grab a a seventh chord, but we're playing it up here on the ninth, uh, so we have our ring finger on the ninth fret, our middle finger on the eighth fret, uh, second string, I'm sorry, so when we grab this seventh chord we're going to push down on the first string with our ring finger on the ninth fret, then we're going to take our pointer finger and we're going to push down on the second string eighth fret, just like that, then we're going to take our middle finger and we're going to push down on the third string ninth fret. So if you are familiar with the D seventh chord down here, it's the same exact chord, but you're playing it up here. So you're the, these two fingers are straddling the ninth fret, and, it, and you're just playing those top three. And so that ends up being an A seventh when you're playing at this high up on the neck. So. And you may want to slide into that. I, th I think I do when I play it. It's the same principle as the beginning. A lot of slides, I think that kind of gives it character. And so the right hand is just playing, is playing down, up, down, and again with the mute. And now what we're going to do after we hit that seventh is we're going to come down, and we actually are going to play a full chord this time, and we're going to slide in again with this chord. And what I'm playing here is it's kind of a combination between a D seventh, so a D seventh proper would be like this. But I, what I do is I play, so the notes I'm playing here are, I got my middle finger here on the uh, fifth string, fifth fret. I got my pointer finger on the fourth string, fourth fret. I got my ring finger on the third string, fifth fret, like that. So I'm playing, those are kind of the root of that D7. But then I take my pinky and I actually bar on the 5th fret, I bar the 1st and 2nd string, which gives me an E or a D ninth chord. That's what it'll sound like. So you can see see how that's barring those two? So it, you're playing that in conjunction with uh, kind of that D. So when you add your, your pinky there, it kind of converts that D7 to a D9. Now if that's too difficult, to grab that full chord, you could also just take your uh, your pointer finger and just um, literally push down on the top three strings like we did uh, before, and that's really the top part of that chord. Either of those work. I'm just used to grabbing this ninth chord, so uh, so I tend to do that. But either of those work. But I think it's important to kind of slide into place to give it the the character.